The history of human migration is a tale as old as time. Migration can be voluntary and involuntary. Involuntary migration includes forced displacement such as slave trade, deportation, trafficking in persons, flight due to war and boundary conflict. Migration can also be regular and irregular. You are watching Naptip on the Move and I am Emanuela Okeke. It's good to have you join us. Our package will enlighten you on irregular migration, how it relates to human trafficking and the consequences of taking off with our requisite documents. The Federal Republic of Germany is in focus. You don't want to miss this. Irregular migration, though not a new trend, has greatly increased in recent times, with many Nigerians leaving the shores and borders of the nation to other African countries, the Middle East, and also to Europe. The Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadonli, shed light on what constitutes irregular migration and how it relates to human trafficking. Illegal migration or irregular migration as we sometimes call it can be defined as an illegal entry into another country through the borders. When you're in a country illegally, you do not have the legal right to remain in the country. That means you do not have um, the documents that you require to even work. You don't have a work permit. You do not have a residence permit. So you, it means that legally speaking, you cannot live there. You cannot work there. And you become vulnerable because you must survive. You must have accommodation to function. You must have a job to be able to eat. And so the traffickers prey on irregular migrants knowing that they have these challenges and then they offer them jobs and then that's it. They fall into their net and then they are trafficked. To curb the instances of irregular migration, one of the strategies employed by NAPTIP is public enlightenment. NAPTIP has embarked on a massive awareness campaign because like I keep saying, to prevent the crime of human trafficking is always better than to cure. I mean, there's so much, you know, going on, you know. We've identified the endemic communities, the coastal areas, the border towns and all of that. Community leaders to ensure that when they see strangers coming to take away their children, they, they, they apprehend them and they hand them over to NACTIP. Um, schools, um, you know, places where we know that um, things like this, people need to listen to know um, 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 children or youths that can be very vulnerable to trafficking. And also, um, we are just uh, waiting for final approval from NEC um, for issues of um, trafficking in persons to be infused in the school primary and secondary school curriculum. So once that is done, we'll catch them young from primary, secondary school. People will begin to understand the dangers of irregular migration, uh, the consequences um, of um, human trafficking as well. NAPTIP also collaborates with state and non-state actors to curb this menace of irregular migration. 
The number one agency is the Nigerian Immigration Services because they are the ones at the borders and then we just have to collaborate with them. So we work with the NIS, we work with the Refugee Commission, we also work with the UN agency on, you know, and so many other agencies like that. The IOM, of course, is one of our major allies, you know, and um, we, we, we partner with quite a number of them. A non-governmental organization, re-educating Africans on the risks and dangers of unplanned journey abroad, Rarduja International, founded by Honorable Eddie Duru, a serving member of the Hessen State Legislature in Germany, representing all foreigners, shares his experience. Uh, we kicked off since 1999, and which is uh, when Radio International had uh, her first seminar in Nigeria, uh, re-educating Africans, trying to enlighten them on the risks and dangers that are associated with this journey. I still do believe that um, that is one of the no number one way out to all of these mess. Because right now, people are trooping in from Nigeria to Italy, or some of them from Nigeria to Niger, or from Nigeria to Morocco, from Morocco to Niger, from Niger to uh, Libya, from Libya then to Italy. It doesn't end in Italy. Uh, some of them go as long as spending one year, two years, three years, as the case may be, some five years on the way. Now, after several years of toiling through the way, and arrive in Germany. In most cases, um, if you don't have good reasons to stay, as it is with many of them, uh, within one month, they are given seven days to leave Germany. They are coming in in tents every day, from Italy to Germany, because they have to smuggle their ways in. There has been high level of unemployment in Italy, and lately, most of Nigerians who are there, they are begging on the street. That is, it's, not, it's not a hidden thing. You see our people, in every supermarket, you see Nigerians begging. They are even fighting over that now. So that people will say, this is my street, this is my zone, east, west, east zone, east zone, and all those stuff like that. So those are the situations, and most of them uh, who cannot survive on that begging as the case may be, or who still have the pride of living on anything that is possible outside begging, you'll find them, they begin to make their way to Germany. But I want us to look inwards. There's a lot that we could do here. Bearing in mind that Africa is a heartbeat of the planet Earth, and Nigeria is a heartbeat of Africa. NAPTI and people like us should be supported and funded to continue to carry this message to the grassroots. It's only when people know that they will understand the implications and the dangers of where they are going to. First Secretary, Refugees, Migration and Humanitarian Assistance, Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, sheds more light on the issue. Germany is pretty new uh, to the whole field of irregular migration. In 2015, as of 2015, we've received a lot of irregular migrants. So the German government has become much more active um, in the field. And we try together with our uh, European partners, first of all, to understand the phenomenon, to help the victims of trafficking, to curb irregular migration where we can, but also in as far as we can provide a perspective uh, for, for, for people back home so that they are not forced into this, this terrible route. So we have uh, pretty much projections. So if we look at the period from 2015 until now, and we sort of look at the pending court cases, asylum seekers, we believe there are about 25,000 to 30,000 Nigerian in Germany who are considered to be irregular and uh, would have to return to Nigeria because they have no, no legal right to remain in Germany. Live video interviews of some of the irregular migrants reveal their experience. I left Nigeria uh, 2015. I arrived in Germany on 22nd of July 2018. Uh, it took me so long because of the what is on the way, what I'm passing through in the way. It's not easy like that. I start from Kano, from Kano to Niger. So when I get to Niger, I've been no completed building for Two months. We use helos from Niger to Libya to pass the desert. So we are 40 in one helos. The helos is six. So we are 40, 40. So when we are moving, when we are going, so the vehicle, one vehicle broke down. So we have to stay and wait for them to repair the vehicle before we start continuing our journey. It takes me two weeks in desert. 
two weeks. I have one gallon of water which I was wearing on my back. So, but I despair with some people who don't have. So we share it everything. Um, I have um, gare which I drink. So when the gare finish, so I have no food again. What I do is that I look, um, I, I look, I go and look for around the anywhere you see maybe somebody throw off something you take it and eat maybe the person have enough food you take it and eat so you can sustain so when if there is no water if you can peace you drink it back you likewise me i did it some people died there like um the after one within when we stay in desert for one week three people died there it took me to get to libya up to four months I stay in Libya for one year, one year and three months. I stay in Italy for one year and eight months. I was begging there. I was begging. I don't have work there. There is nothing good at the commerce of there. So I was begging on the street. I sleep on the under the bridge or train station. So I go and beg money inside the supermarket to earn my living. When I was when I came to Italy. Italy is not easy for us to stay, but we are. If you win in Africa, we said Italy is best country. But when I came to Italy, I know that it's not easy. I stayed one year and two months in Italy. After one year and two months, no work, nothing, nothing. I decided to go to Germany. When I came to Germany, German people caught me on border. Instead of them to free me because I was inside the jammy, they took me to prison. They call it deportation camp. I spent six weeks there. They took me back to Italy. When I reached Italy, Italy government gave me paper. Serve me paper. I should leave the country because they grant me to stay. I do not want to stay. I decided to travel. As I live and travel, I go my way. I say to where? They said they don't know. And the seven days they give it to me, I don't know what to go with seven days. I try to go to France. We under that seven days, the France people, France borders who caught me on border, return me back for Italy again. Italy see my file. They have give me seven days to leave. I'm now spend more than seven days before I try to leave. They add more three days for inside. Say if they caught me again, I will see myself in prison. I'm living in the street. Sleeping in train station, both go rain and sun. I'm in the street for two months. I have never take. I not even take my shower. I don't eat anything because of the frustration. I don't have home. I'm homeless. That is why I'm back from the Germany. When I came back to Germany the second time, they bring my file, my case. They say that I have been Germany before, and they, I know they don't permit me to stay. They give me seven days to leave the German again, which means I don't know what to do. Italy rejected me, German also rejected me. In fact, as I'm living now, I'm living like a tree, who, a person who don't have any world, anything to do again. I'm tired. I would advise anybody who think that Europe is the best. As long as the person is well, so as long as there's no sickness for somebody's body, we can make it in Africa because there's no place like home. I used to hear that language before, but I don't believe it. But now I know there's no place like home because Europe is a name. It's not easy for us. It's not easy for people who is there. If guests told you what they're passing through, you wouldn't believe it. This is, in fact, this Europe is not easy for us. The story shouldn't always be this way, as there are legal ways to migrate to Germany. We're not against migration, we are for regular migration and um, I think for Nigerian what is, uh, what is best, what is most prominent is to come and study in Germany. So we have a website, it's called studyin.de, where you can find out all about study programs, about free scholarships and whatnot. And I mean, there are many Nigerians who do this and who are very successful doing it. I mean, I can show, you know, got a brochure right here, International Master's Program in Germany, also in English now. Um, so this is, uh, I mean, obviously we encourage you to learn German, it makes it much easier, but we do also have English speaking uh, study programs and we do encourage that. Buttressing the dangers of irregular migration, the Director General of NAPTIP, 
Dame Julie Okadolle shares a few insights. Migration is everyone's right, but do it right. Um, do not try to put yourself in harm's way because when you travel in an irregular manner or in an illegal manner, you're bound to, to, to get into trouble. So if you want to travel, travel right. Go to the embassies, get your visa and travel properly because if you do it the wrong way, you go through the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, um, it's very unlikely you get to the final destination. And even when you do, that will just be the beginning of hell on earth. There's no place like home. Nigeria is the place to be. You have lots of opportunities. Don't get yourself traffic. Don't put yourself in harm's way. Um, if you're in doubt of any information or any offer, please call Nati. She then highlights the need for destination countries to work on reducing the pull factors that enable irregular migration. Human trafficking is not a Nigerian problem and people must continue to realize that. We are doing our bit here. The transit countries should do their bit to stop the um, Nigerians from crossing into their countries in the first place. And the destination countries should also do what they can to stop them from even finally getting to their countries at the same time. So, and to stop all those things that are attracting the Nigerians from Nigeria to their countries because we have uh, pornography all over the internet in the destination countries. It sells like hot cake. Uh, prostitution is legal. So how is someone to know if somebody is legally a prostitute or if the person that is being prostituted is a traffic victim? So that's a major issue. Uh, cheap labor as well. And so they turn to illegal immigrants. You know, when it suits them, the illegal immigrants can work for, for little or nothing. And then when it doesn't suit them, oh, they are illegal immigrants. So you know, they, it's, it's something that we all have to sit down and, 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 and fight, you know, in a synergized and then more uh, coordinated manner. It's not a fight for one country and it's not a, bl a, a blaming game. You know, no country should point fingers at another country. All countries are guilty and should come together to fight human trafficking to put it to a stop. The gory stories of these irregular migrants is a lesson for all to learn. A word, they say, is indeed enough for the wise. Human trafficking, popularly known as modern-day slavery, is very much with us, even in this 21st century. It is a crime against God and humanity. You may be thinking, this message is not for me. Think again, because if you are paying your employee through an agent, you are a trafficker. If you employ a child under 12 years as a domestic worker, you are a trafficker. If you abduct a person against their will, keep and exploit them for monetary gains, you are a trafficker. If you promise international jobs with the intention to exploit the victim sexually and for cheap labor, you are a trafficker. If you buy and sell human organs, you are a trafficker. There are so many components of trafficking with devastating effects on the victims. This victim may be your daughter, son, brother, sister, mother or father. Let us be our brother's keeper. Join hands with NAPTI to stop human trafficking now. Report cases of human trafficking to these NAPTI hotlines 0703-00-00203 or 080-00-22-55-62-7847. NAPTI, ensuring a human trafficking free nation. The children whose faces you see on your screen are missing. Five-year-old Chibundu Uzo and four-year-old Victor Uzo are both brothers of the same parents. The two brothers were abducted outside their house, located opposite Dakibu police station in Jabi area of Abuja on the 22nd day of June 2018. If you have a lead, please call this NAPTIP hotline on your screen. A word they say is enough for the wise. Please don't take chances. You only have one life to live. So do it right. Naptip Events is next. Stay with us. To commemorate the 2018 International Day of the Girl Child, the Naptip Sokoto Zuno Command, in collaboration with a non-governmental organization, Youth Hub Africa, organized a campaign tagged Let's stand together for the passage of the Child Rights Bill. In his speech, the Sokoto Zono commander, Hassan Hamisu Tahir, spoke on the campaign which is geared towards empowering children, especially the girl child, with education up to university level. 
the passage of the Child Rights Bill and empowerment of children, especially the girl child, will aid the agency in the fight against domestic violence, sexual abuse and human trafficking. Officers from the Public Enlightenment Department of the agency visited Government Secondary School, Jiwa Abuja, to enlighten the students on the ills of human trafficking and child abuse. The NAPTI staff gave lectures on sexual and labor exploitation, child abuse and the prevention of these ills. They also advised the students to report suspected cases of human trafficking and child abuse to the agency. The sensitization was enlightening as students sought to gain more insight on the prevention of human trafficking. At the end of the sensitization, affirming statements against human trafficking and child abuse were made by the students. I am priceless. Nobody, Nobody. can buy me. Some students then commended the efforts of the agency towards eradicating human trafficking in Nigeria. Nazi people here has made me very protect humanity. And one of them is that they help fight human trafficking and child labor. They come together and look for and look for possible means to make sure that child labor stops. They encourage us to speak out if anybody or any child man try to molest us. I, I give them bravo, I say to them they are trying and I pray God will keep on strengthening them and encouraging them. The senior mistress monitoring, Loretta Toyo, also appreciated the agency for the initiative. NAPTI have really done their best in sensitizing the children. So we are very grateful for what they have done. And I pray also that NAPTI will not just stop in our school, they should go around because this is a thing, a problem in our society. And I pray that as NAPTI is doing it, I see God helping us and all this problem will be erased completely in our society. The principal of the school, Abdullahi Musa, thanked NAPTI for the visit. We have uh, been hearing about your activities in different media houses. And we are very happy that you are here to come and talk to our students. From GSS Jiwa, the public enlightenment staff proceeded to Karimo Market in Abuja to sensitize the traders on the dangers of human trafficking. Public enlightenment is essential towards the prevention of human trafficking and all forms of violence against persons. A federal high court sitting in Bini City, Edo State, has sentenced the 49-year-old lady, Ehe Christie Hirobo, also known as Mama Jennifer, who hails from a Hero One local government area of Edo State to nine years imprisonment for human trafficking. Ehe Christie Hirobo was alleged to have recruited a secondary school dropout in Bini City for her sister, Esther Ehirobo, who lives in Greece. The secondary school dropout was promised a job as a fashion designer in Greece and was made to sign an agreement to pay the sum of 2,000 euros, give 15 Hollandis and a set of gold to the recruiter, while her sister in Greece was to receive 60,000 euros, six Hollandis and one set of gold. Upon arrival in Greece, the victim was forced into prostitution. Esther Hirobo was charged for the procurement of a person for prostitution deceitful inducement and organizing foreign travels which promotes prostitution. This is contrary to three provisions of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Law Enforcement and Administration Act of 2015. The presiding judge, Honorable Justice A.M. Liman, sentenced the accused to three years imprisonment on each of the three counts which are to run concurrently. NAPTIP On The Move is co-sponsored by the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Programme, ROLAC, funded by the European Union and implemented by the British Council. For more inquiries and support, or to report cases of suspected human trafficking and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotlines on 0703-0000203 or 0800-2255-627847. Or email info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria and watch our videos on YouTube. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode. Be your brother's keeper by reporting suspected cases of human trafficking, child abuse, and all forms of violence against persons to Naptip. The Naptip iReport app 
Put the power of fast and easy reporting in your hands. Please download it today from the Google Play Store and do join us again next week. I am Imanala Okeke. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.